And the final last bit I added was a glove hook. This Haley strategic one I found and isn't the best, so let me know if you find something better. Attached are the Mechanics Impact Agilite Edition gloves. These are designed to give you the protection of a covert glove while also giving you the finger dexterity of a fingerless glove. Now these gloves are definitely more useful for like protection than like warmth. I, I do like them for shooting, but if you find yourself in like mud and crud, you, you definitely start wondering why you have half a glove. Like most gloves though, I just hang them from my belt and never use them. But that's my whole belt loadout and kind of how I have everything set up. What? How did I do the angled mag? Oh, all right, I'll show you. So, welcome back, wizards. And as many of you probably know by now, the Agilite Magnetics Belt did get pushed back to March 27th. So I figured today, I'll give you a bit of a sneak peek. We'll go over my belt and how I have it all configured. And then I'll have that whole belt review for you on March 28th. So today we'll be going over all my pouch and mag setups along with all my holsters and stuff on the Agilite Magnetics Battle Belt. Hopefully by seeing this, you can get some configuration ideas as to how you want to set up your belt, or if you see some new and interesting stuff that you've never heard of before, you can pick that up when you go to order your belt. I will say though, that there's been this uh, odd history of things that we show going out of stock quickly. So if you see a certain set of pouches or something that you want to get, I would recommend probably ordering it now as when the actual belt release comes out, a lot of this stuff's going to be out of stock. As some exciting news for y'all too, you can also use discount code TLDCO to save on pouches, carriers, or even the new belt. The code works on anything on Agilite's website, and I also have a ton of discount codes for a lot of the different gear we're gonna show you. So I highly recommend you check the description, particularly if you see something that you like, and make sure to save a little bit of money when you go to buy it. I just say, it's probably, whatever website you're on, it's probably TLDCO though. Now, before we get into my whole setup, let's take a moment and thank today's sponsor. Today's video was sponsored in part by Nocturne Industries. Start your night vision journey right with the monocular Tanto that allows you to upgrade two Tantos into a fully articulating binocular configuration with the Daisho Bridge. No matter your initial budget or your night vision goals, Nocturne Industry has you covered. I really like the idea, you know, particularly with the barriers of entries with how expensive night vision is, to buy like a single Tanto and then upgrade into dual night vision later by just buying another one and then buying the bridge. And the cool part is you can use discount code TLDCO over at nocturneindustries.com if you go that route also. So big thanks to Nocturne Industries. Now, before we get into this, one more thing we gotta talk about is all of my biases. Everything on this belt from the pouches to the holsters to pretty much everything was sent to me for the purpose of review. And I really love the Agilite guys along with all the other fantastic folks behind many of these brands. So I definitely have some biases in my choices. Knowing that, make sure to watch some other content and some other reviews like EOD Fish and all the other guys out there that do some great product reviews so that you can make the most educated purchasing decision and don't just assume that everything that I say is, is what everybody agrees with. Now though, let's absolutely get into the belt and let's do things a little bit different this time and start with the left side and work our way around. The first item on our belt is the Agilite tourniquet holder. The front of the pouch uses an X and O design with the O designating tourniquet within a loop field. You could also put like those little square patches for like, I don't know, like a medical insignia or like your blood type here if you wanted to do that also. The tourniquet pouch uses an inner elastic sleeve to hold the tourniquet with the outer cordura layer to protect that inner elastic sleeve. This attaches on the rear via hook and loop, allowing you to connect it into your plate carrier or battle belt system meaning you could take this guy and connect it into your plate carrier or whatever else you use, so it's pretty versatile. Now, I really do like how Agilite took this a step further as there's a ton of the little like elastic tourniquet holders on the market, and they added that Cordura layer to protect the whole thing and really just took the whole design up a notch. Moving down, we have our holster system with the Guardian Warrior Solutions bang hanger wrapped in the multi-cam Reese wrap. The holster adapter connects in via these Molly straps. From the belt review, to the loadout, to everything else, <laughs> please don't make me undo that again. The Molly tabs use screws to keep the holster adapter tightened to the belt. The bang hanger also has an array of mounting holes to allow me to get whatever holster adapter I have into the correct position to fit me best. The Reese wrap comes in a ton of colors and this multi-cam just brings the whole theme together on this setup. 
For the holster, I just used a Safariland QLS adapter into our Safariland 6345, which is compatible with 2011 setups. And while it fits the staccato, I'd much rather carry a bull instead. And this is the TAC four and a quarter in multicam, of course. For our leg strap, we use the Shaw Concept Sidekick V2 holster pad. This offers a nice padded leg strap to give you added longevity while also articulating with you as you move. Having a design like this with the articulation is pivotal for, uh, you know, sitting or, or just, <laughs> just moving at all. The articulation gives you a repeatable position to draw from regardless of your leg position. The leg strap is also swappable from left to right side, along with an elastic stretch strap portion for extra flexibility in pants and different types of clothing. In reality, for most of my belt setups, I either use the Shaw articulating one or the Wilder one, because otherwise, whenever you move your leg around or start to like go into real life positions, your holster starts to do a whole bunch of dumb stuff. But the Bang Hanger, Reese Wrap, Safari Land holster, and the Shaw leg strap is about, it's about as good as you can get in a holster configuration. Plus, yes, we do have discount codes for all this down in the description. Not, not Shaw though, not Shaw, he doesn't love me yet. Next on the belt, we have our Grim Hunter Tactical Rapid Multi-Tool Pouch. This uses Tegris reinforced inner and outer layers with elastic expansion to give you a fantastic pouch that won't collapse on you, giving you great retention while still making re-indexing simple. And it actually includes retention straps that you can put on the top, like if you want it all to be held in place, I just took those off. Continuing around, next we see the Agilite IFAC pouch that we saw at SHOT Show. And the one I have is a prototype and not a production version, so I'm not allowed to talk about it, but I will put a link up here to the SHOT Show content at the Agilite booth where Lev goes into like wild detail about the whole IFAC pouch and the different functionality of it. But me, I have to keep going before you all get me in trouble. It's awesome. Moving around, next is the Agilite general purpose pouch. This pouch comes in a variety of colors, but we again went with multicam. I mean, because at this point, <laughs> why wouldn't we? The GP pouch has a low profile design to keep you from snagging, meaning you can cinch it all down to be small and compact or expand it out as you place more gear inside. You could also just tighten it down to keep objects from bouncing around inside the pouch. Another secret bit is you can also use this bungee area for a second tourniquet for your kit also. For mounting, the rear uses three molly rows and has half inch slots for connecting in belts or plate carriers. There's also a belt pass-through that you can use in lieu of the molly slots also. Now me, I like connecting things in molly. I think it's more secure and easier to connect them and remove them, but there is the pass-through there if you wanted to use that. Plus as a lefty, I gotta remove everything and then slide it all the way around. It's just a whole lot easier and better with molly. On the outside of the GP are two large zipper pulls to make it easy to open in the dark or with gloved hands. Inside is a fully looped back panel to connect in hook back inserts along with chem lights, pens, and notebook organization. It's just a well thought out little GP pouch and a ton better than the other things on the market that are just big open pouches. For those people that need this, I didn't forget you. It also easily fits two sandwiches or two folded pizza slices not Costco pizza slices, like normal crappy pizza slices like Domino's or something. Continuing this serious belt review, we move down and see our pincer rifle single. These you've seen before and have a nice reinforced opening for re-indexing and an elastic lower portion for added retention. Now this is not the V2 that they showed at SHOT Show. The V2 is designed for AK mags for that little like tab that tears mag pouches apart. It has some extra expansion. I think it's a little bit more beefed up. I haven't seen it yet. But the new V2 will, like I said, allow for AK mags and it'll add for some more flexibility of some different mag sizes. It's also been noted that this pouch can have some pretty ridiculous retention when you first get it. So I highly recommend just like sitting down with it, insert mags and remove them and work through it while you watch a show or something to kind of break it in and make it be a lot better and not just be like the stiffest pouch ever. Plus it gives me an excuse to mess with mags and belts and stuff when I'm watching Moana for like the 658th time. The rear of the pincer uses the same attachment design as the GP pouch and the other ones that'll show you with the half inch slots to get your pouch in the exact position you want or to mount it directly to a carrier or a placard. 
Now, I do wish they had a shorty version of this, though, because when the mag is fully inserted, it's kind of hard to get a full Coke can grip on the actual magazine. But I did also find that retention still works perfectly, even if I don't fully seat the mag in the pouch, giving me the exact grip that I want. So, I mean, it's fine. I can make it work. But a V2 in a shorty? Oh, yes, please. Keeping going, though, next on the belt, we have our Bull Armory 1911 knife. This uses the same grips and styling of a 1911, and this attaches to the belt using a standard tech lock for easy swapping on and off your belt. You know what this thing needs, though? Multicam 1911 grips. I know some viewer out there has a link for some of those somewhere out there on the internet, so please put it down in the comment and help me make this happen. As we come around to the end of the belt, next we have our pincer pistol double pouch. Much like the mag pouch, this uses the same reinforced opening and elastic to give you that great combination of re-indexing and retention you want in a pistol pouch. Also included are two Agilite hook and loop flap covers that can be added to give you additional retention. I will say though, much like the rifle pouch, you need to break these in and adding those inserts adds even more retention. The rear of the pistol pouch is designed the same as all the other Agilite pouches with the half molly slots for flexibility with belt positioning and standard molly attachment. And the final last bit I added was a glove hook. This Haley strategic one I found and isn't the best, so let me know if you find something better. Attached are the Mechanics Impact Agilite Edition gloves. These are designed to give you the protection of a covert glove while also giving you the finger dexterity of a fingerless glove. Now these gloves are definitely more useful for like protection than like warmth. I, I do like them for shooting, but if you find yourself in like mud and crud, you, you definitely start wondering why you have half a glove. Like most gloves though, I just hang them from my belt and never use them. But that's my whole belt loadout and kind of how I have everything set up. What, how did I do the angled mag? Oh, all right, I'll show you. Now Lev actually showed me this. It's not perfect, but it works. Instead of going through the lower molly slot directly underneath, instead skip one and skip a slot on each of the rear positions. The half molly slots allow you to then have some flexibility on aligning this guy up with a little bit of a canted angle. And the angled mag really helps for clearing your gear and actually drawing your pistol mags cleanly when you have a huge plate carrier in the way. The Agilite guys are pretty smart, so I'm sure they'll come up with some sort of angled adapter or like a sleeve like they have at Ronin Tactics. But seriously, that's our whole belt loadout and how I have it all configured. And hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to configure your belt if you go the Agilite Magnetics route. As I said, we have a discount code for most of this stuff. <laughs> I think most of it down in the description. So just make sure to check that first before you buy anything and see if I can save you a little bit of money. And I'm just saying right now, I don't wanna hear any complaining and comments from all of you that everything's sold out once the belt releases. Now make sure to stay tuned as we bring you the whole Agilite Magnetics belt review and see where this belt lands on our list. I know I've teased it enough to you guys and I really do enjoy this belt, so you're gonna wanna see that review. But I hope this overview of my whole belt setup was useful in your purchasing decisions to give you some different belt ideas for your setups. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and all of our YouTube members. You make it possible we can do all this great stuff on this channel and show off all this cool gear to everybody. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what pouches you would put on your belt, what your favorite pouch companies are. I wanna hear about it. All right, everyone, ball shout. Pincer pistol double pouch. Whoa, my God. Pincer, pincer pistol double. Pincer, pincer pistol double. Pincer pistol. I can't do it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a little bit upset that this didn't come in multicam. Like it's kind of multicam colors, but it needs to be like straight. I think I have a problem. I'm pretty sure I have a sickness. All right. You guys are great. This belt's awesome. A lot of these pouches are really, really sweet. We need to figure out how to get this thing angled and then I'm gonna be ultra happy. That's it. All right, get out of here.